Hey friends. You know, there's a lot of things I really like about Twitter, but one of my favorite things is that the right tweet or thread can genuinely change your life. And there's a lot of tweets and threads that I can say this about, sort of have a running memory of them, but there's this one thread that I want to talk about today and the way that it impacted me. Um, you know, a while ago I was getting interested in uh, the way that Biza talks about talking points and what the value of that is. And so I was looking for his threads on talking points and found one that made a really interesting point. This was his thread on what he calls desire paths. And this is sort of uh, connecting the dots between different talking points that you have and noticing the ways that they're connected. And he makes this observation that connecting your different talking points to each other is sort of like connecting trade routes between different cities and um, the more connections you have the more value or wealth is created and he's not talking about wealth in, in an economic sense but more like the the value provided sense and um, one talking point can be really good but if you connect it to another talking point it's even more valuable and at the time the question that i had was something like why does he emphasize talking points you know that that phrase is sort of associated with like politics and like, oh, there's this thing that I want to hammer home and I want to talk about. And I think for Visa, it's like if you're prolific, if you're a creator and an artist or someone that's a public figure and you're just putting a lot out there, then you find yourself returning to these same things over and over again. And he's certainly someone who's been prolific and will continue to be prolific. And so if you are prolific like that, there's a value to knowing what the things are that you talk about a lot and uh, knowing how to find them and how to sort of expound them and like what what's the best way to share that specific idea. And that's something that has actually been quite useful to me for my various creative practices. You know, I've also been pretty prolific at this point with my writing and other things that I've put out there. And so as I do that more and more, I find myself keeping track of what my talking points about various topics are and like for example, one of the reasons I started a, like a loving kindness book was at my weekly events, I found myself repeatedly saying the same things about loving kindness practice. And some of them were kind of tricky or I'd never heard anyone say them before. And so I wanted to put them in writing, say them as well as I could. And then of course, since they're in writing, I can distribute them more widely than me just saying something to one person. And, you know, I don't usually record the, the question periods during the uh, Saturday meditations because they're sort of private, right? Someone shares a question that's there on their heart. Uh, that can be a very personal thing. And so I, I don't feel comfortable recording that, but I do want to share the various things that I find myself saying. And so I found a book was a really good way to do that. But in any case, um, this was sort of in the back of my head. And then at a certain point, I realized, oh, Visa's observation about connecting talking points to each other, them being like um, connecting trade cities to each other and that adding additional wealth is an insight that I can apply to my various contemplative practices that I explore. You know, at some point I had made a diagram, a scaffold about the different contemplative practices that I do actively because there are so many at this point, I don't know. There's probably like 20 or 30 distinct things that I'm doing at any given time in my own consciousness, in my daily life. And I may not formally take the time to practice them, but they're something that I'm exploring and they're a skill that I've developed and I'm continuing to develop. And I realized that Visa's observation applies there too, that if I can connect two different practices, even ones that seem seemingly unrelated, then that creates additional value. So for example, one of my main trade cities, as it were, one of the main contemplative practices that I do is loving kindness. And so I'm constantly looking for, now that I've had this insight, ways to connect loving kindness practice to other different practices that I do. And in some ways I was doing this uh, already, but sort of unconsciously, I wasn't knowing to look for different connections. And so now I'm doing that consciously. Um, I'd already found value in this with things like combining loving kindness with dance, which I've talked about but, uh, you know, 
that that was that's an extremely powerful connection for me. I love practicing loving kindness with dance. It makes the dance more enjoyable. It makes the more meta more powerful. I'm not sitting still. It's this like joyful, alive, expressive, just plain fun way to practice it. Uh, but now I can connect meta to lots of other things. So um, and I'm actively looking for ways to do that. So some of the ones that I found, for example, are. Um, connecting Meta to IFS. And other people have talked about this, but I uh, have connected them in my own experience and can continue to practice that specific connection. How can I send loving kindness to my different parts, to the different aspects of my mind? Um, that's, that's the way that internal family systems or IFS looks at things. Looking at the mind as multiple, seeing different parts or aspects of yourself almost as like characters or personalities. And if those are sort of people within your mind, can you send them Meta? Can you love them? Can you give them what they need? Can you take care of them? And one of the real beauties of these making these connections is that if you have an insight in one area, you can cross apply that to a different area. And any skills that you've built in one area, if it's connected to another, you can sort of cross apply it there. And any sort of intuitions you have in one area can also be cross applied. So you can make progress in these areas much more quickly and also uh, the impact or value that you find in doing these practices is deepened quite substantially. Uh, so what are some other ones? I think, uh, yeah, I've also found it valuable to connect Metta to my writing practice. I found myself often ending pieces of writing that I write with a loving kindness phrase, for example, and that to me at this point feels like a very natural way to uh, end a piece with writing. It's authentic to me to express love and care in a certain way. Uh, yeah, so each of the practices that I do, I'm trying to connect meta to it, and then there are some other connections that happen as well. Like, for example, um, I found that Alexander Technique, which I've been exploring, and Tai Chi, which is one of my main practices, uh, connect together very nicely as well. That there's a lot of opportunities to, for example, uh, expand my awareness when I'm doing Tai Chi, or to inhibit certain things, or, um, you know, to notice aliveness in the Tai Chi. and. Uh, tai Chi just feels like a very natural, um, almost like training ground for cultivating the skills in Alexander Technique. So those could go together very nicely. And again, uh, anytime I get some insight in about Alexander Technique through Tai Chi, that still applies anywhere else that I apply it. So that's been really lovely as well. You know, I think the insights of Tai Chi also apply to any of the movement practices that I do, for example, it's very easy to connect those. And one of my favorite ways to do that is uh, with dance. There's sort of almost, um, you know, I have a dance practice as well, and that's about embodiment and uh, expressivity and aliveness and things like this, and of course, metta. But um, when I'm physically dancing, I can sort of play with the ratios of how much I'm doing dance versus how much I'm doing Tai Chi. Like, am I 100% dancing? Am I 100% doing Tai Chi as I do every day with my daily Tai Chi practice? Or uh, is there some balance in between where I'm like 80% dancing, but 20% doing Tai Chi or, um, you know, 80% doing Tai Chi, but can I do it a little bit like more with a dance? So there are lots of these sorts of connections that I've found and um, some of them I can articulate explicitly, but some of them are more implicit or intuitive where there's some insight or skill that I've gained that's internal, that's maybe a little bit harder to articulate, but anytime I can find a connection be between these practices, things just really open up. And it's almost as if, um, uh, how to put it? Um, you know, the, if I list the different things, the different practices that I do, Metta, Tai Chi, Alexander Technique, and so on, as I've done in the past, you can look at this diagram that I've made. Uh, it's not up to date, I should probably update it, but in any case, you know, there's a certain finite number of like core practices that I'm regularly doing right now. It's almost as if I don't even need to add anything else. I am, of course, actively curious and learning more and being exposed to new practices, new traditions, but I don't even need that. I can just already find novelty and variety and depth in making new connections between the different practices that I'm doing and exploring those and even intentionally practicing those, specifically the connections. Like, can I practice the connection between meta and internal family systems or parts work, for example, or can I explore Alexander technique 
through my Tai Chi practice today? Or is there a way to bring the Tai Chi into my standing meditation practice or any of the other connections? Um, and the more of these connections I make, the stronger they all are, the stronger my contemplative practice is overall, the easier it is to bring it into different life situations that I find myself in. The benefits just compound and cascade. Um, the, the sort of wealth or value as in Visa's original thread is just growing enormously. And so um, I don't even need to add new trade cities, just adding connections and strengthening those connections is already tremendously valuable. And then every time I add a new node, that's explosively powerful. So yeah, that's been that's been a real shift for me and how I look at my practice is just taking the lens that Visa applies that describes in this thread about talking points and connecting basically intellectual ideas to connecting specific contemplative practices that I do. And it's brought me a lot of joy and a lot of insights and a lot of interesting things to try. So I wanted to share that with you today and see what you think about it. So yeah, thanks for watching.